Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh guys today we are going to continue our video reactions on the prophet series uh, we left off at prophet adam peace be upon him and we'll continue with kabil habil and sheet alayhi salam and i can't wait to react to this video and give some insights guys let's just get right into it and continue with the video kabil's nature was very tough and rough habil was more humble and lean. And Shaith was a righteous servant of Allah Azza wa Jal. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. From Hawa, she fell pregnant 20 times. Each pregnancy with twins. Mm. A boy and a girl. So from Adam direct, he had 40 children. I do want to mention, uh, I have heard from reputable people on YouTube, uh, you know, Muslim scholars and, you know, students of the religion that do talk about this uh, narration where, you know, how about peace be upon her, she fell pregnant 20 times, each one was a twin. So from my uh, knowledge, there is nothing authentic in the hadiths about this. Uh, if there is mention of this, it's probably weak, fabricated or unauthentic. To my knowledge, from what I've heard, this isn't an authentic story, so if you guys have more knowledge on this, please let me know. Thank you. The first child to be born for Adam السلام, was a boy by the name of Qabil. In, in English or in biblical terms, his name is Cain. Mm -hmm. And straight after him in the same stomach was a sister. So they were twins. Qabil's twin sister was beautiful, whereas Qabil wasn't very, was not very handsome. After him came Habil. In biblical terms, his name is Abel. And he also had a twin sister, but Habil was a little bit more handsome, and his twin sister wasn't as attractive. And at that time, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was that the male and female from one pregnancy could not get married to one another. It was haram. So the male from the first pregnancy had to get married to the female of the second pregnancy. So assuming, you know, the intensity of the hadith, I guess, that they're talking about, I wish they had referenced it. But assuming that it is authentic, right? Each time period had a different sharia. So we had the same message in terms of belief of God, right? That's why Islam started with the Prophet Adam, peace be upon him. But different times had different rules and regulations and stuff like that. But the belief in God was the same. So, for example, currently in today, we're allowed to marry cousins, right? First cousins even and a lot of people think that's such a big you know oh my god it's such a bad thing but if you really look at the stats behind it and the scientific knowledge behind it the defects or whatever you want to call them they're actually pretty negligible it's not that bad and people just have like a negative connotation to it and you know society just you know nature versus nurture type stuff you get conditioned into thinking oh this is bad blah 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 whatever but regardless during that time period you know since it was the start of creation and humans, right? These were the first humans, more or less. The law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them was that the first set of twins could not marry each other because they shared the same womb. And they had to marry the second set of twins. Something along those lines, right? So that was their halal, haram, in terms of marriage type stuff. For us, it's obviously siblings and all that stuff is out of question. That is completely haram. Cousins is fine. But then there is encouragement to, you know, spread and diversify the gene pool and stuff like that. It's not mandatory to marry your cousin, but there's nothing wrong with it from our perspective. And if someone wants to make a logical argument against that, we'd be open to listen to it. But it's usually emotional ones, so it is what it is. And the female of the first pregnancy had to get married to the male of the second pregnancy. Habil had to marry the sister of Qabil, and Qabil had to marry the sister of Habil. Qabil's nature was very tough and rough. Habil was more humble and lean. So Qabil had to marry Habil's sister, who was not that beautiful. So he looked at his sister and he was wondering, why should Abel, why should Habil get married to my sister who is so beautiful? And why should I marry his sister who is not that beautiful? Why can't I marry my own sister? So now they had a bit of an issue and they took this issue to their father, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals unto Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and Adam alayhi salatu wasalam instructs both of them to offer a sacrifice unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And based on whose sacrifice is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that individual can get married to Qabil's sister. So the laws of Sadaqah at that time were that they had to take whatever they wanted to give in charity, offer unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had to go and place it on top of a particular mountain and a fire would descend and gobble up that charity. That's pretty amazing. So you see, as I said, the laws of that time were different, right? Rules and regulations were different. So in their time period, they had to, you know, offer a sacrifice or something. And like you said, a fire would come and gobble it up or attack it or something like that, just to signify like which offering is accepted, stuff like that. So in this case, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing because like it shows you like these people at that time, they actually like saw a lot of, like living miracles. It's pretty insane. Like imagine just giving an offering and speaking to Allah, making dua, and then a fire just comes down at your offering or something like that. Like that's just like clear indication of all that. Like how could you not have trust and belief in a situation like that? But yeah, I mean, in terms of Kabil, He's clearly, you know, the lust is getting to him. He's more infatuated with the beauty of the other twin sister. Um, and he he kind of wants to go rebel against the rules and regulations of that time. And he wants to marry someone more beautiful who's not acceptable for him based on those rules and regulations. So Prophet Adam, peace be upon him, being fair, is redirecting that decision to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's saying, let's leave it to Allah to see whose offering gets accepted. This was a sign that the charity was accepted by Allah, maqbool, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Qabil, Cain, he was a farmer. Habil, Abel, he was a shepherd. So Habil, he brings uh, the, the best sheep that he had to offer as a sacrifice unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qabil, who was a farmer, he brought the worst of his produce and he placed that on top of the mountain. See, this is where it comes down to sincerity, right? Like one, the Habil, the brother, right? Or Abel in biblical terms. He pretty much brought his best of the best, right? To offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's sincere about it. And Habil, I mean, uh, Gabil, who's mm -hmm. Cain in biblical terms, he brought the worst of the worst, right? He's pretty much trying to get what he wants from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also, you know, save his livelihood and everything that's important to him here so he's not really being sincere with his offering he's kind of giving it's like giving charity right but you're only giving charity of like the food that you were eating and you didn't like so you just gave it right or if you're full and you gave your leftovers that's not really charity that's just like yo it's not the sincerity isn't behind it you know so you can also logically just follow that his offering is just not going to get accepted Fire came down and it burnt the sacrifice of Habil, of Abel. The sacrifice of Qabil was just left like that. So the sacrifice, the charity of Habil was accepted and the sacrifice of Qabil was rejected. So Qabil went up to Habil and he told him, I'm going to kill you. No, so no. Habil was much more righteous than his brother Qabil. He said, if you... Pull out your hands out to me to kill me. I would not do the same towards you because I fear Allah. If you want to take the sins, then you take the sins. So you could be from the people of the hellfire. And it's only the actions of the dhalimin, the oppressors. So Qabil, now he starts to plot and plan how to kill his brother Habil. And one day Habil gets late to return home. He had gone to um, tend to his animals. And Adam والسلام, was now worried, where is Habil, where is Habil? And then he instructs Qabil, why don't you go and look for your brother, mm. see whether any harm has befallen him and bring him back home safely. Qabil goes out to look for Habil. And whilst he was going by the area where Habil used to let his animals graze, he finds Habil fast asleep by a tree. Qabil? grabbed a massive rock and came and crushed his brother's head with the rock. Bro, how could you do that to your own brother? Like, over a girl? Like, I get it, man. Men love women. But, like, you killed your own brother. 
over a girl. Like, how crazy is that? Like, I don't understand that. Like, the shaitan really got to this guy, man. Like, it's it's insane. And Habil was the first human being to be ever killed on the surface of this earth. Wow. The Prophet ﷺ said, from that day to the day of judgment, every innocent love that's been killed, Qabil gets a part of the sayyat. Why? Because he is the first one to start this killing and murder. See, I don't know about this one, guys. What do you guys think about that? Because I know we, you know, the next generations don't bear the sins of the predecessors. So that statement doesn't make sense to me. Like, yeah, he's the first one to initiate the murder aspect of it. And that's his sin. And he's going to have to suffer for that and deal with the consequences of that. But why do, like, for example, someone in today's 21st century generation who kills, why should that sin trace back to him? Because they're still doing that based on their own free choice and will. And they don't have any force or pressure based on Kabil and anything like that. So if you guys could clarify that, that'd be great. And Kabil feel guilty. I killed my own brother. I got deceived, brainwashed by the shaitan and killed my own brother. And he looks at his brother. His brother's dead, bleeding. So Damn. what does he do? Leave him like that? So Kabil put Habil on his back and went. He doesn't know what to do. Never heard of someone being killed. Mm. Never heard of someone being dead. They don't know what to do with the dead body. Confused what to do with his brother. And at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in front of Qabil, two crows will come. One crow will kill the other one. And then after that crow will kill the other one, will dig up a hole and bury that crow and cover him with the dust. So Qabil saw that. He knew that's the way to do with his brother. So he dug up a hole and he buried his brother Habil in that hole. See, Allah can use so many different ways to speak and communicate with people. Like, in this case, Kabil had no idea what to do with Habil. And Allah SWT sent the crows and pretty much reenacted what happened between him and his brother. They kind of fought, even though the brother was sleeping, it wasn't really a fight. But they fought, right? And one killed the other, and then the crow buried it. Just to show an example to Kabil, like, this is how you bury your dead. And... I'm glad he realized his mistake and he realized he was influenced by the shaitan and all that and he felt guilty and everything. But the question is, does he repent, right? Because that's what it comes down to. Do you repent, ask for forgiveness, and are you sincere? That's that's the big question. And then he became from the guilty ones, but did not repent. See, so guys, if you don't repent, you cannot be forgiven for that sin, you know? And what did Qabil do after that? Qabil, he grabbed his sister and he ran away from Adam. He's too mm. shy to face his father and lived on the flat surface of the land. Mm. Qabil was the first human being to live on the flat surface of the land. Qabil did not go back to his father. Information was known by his other brothers and sisters and, and the news came to, to Hawat first, oh. to their mother. Some narrations say that Iblis himself came to Hawa and he said to Hawa, Qabil killed Habil. And she said, killed? What does kill mean? And Hawa didn't know what death was. She said, what do you mean? What's killing? What's, what's death? Iblis told her, it means that he can no longer eat or talk or walk or drink. Damn, that's a pretty deep way to describe death, right? Like, that's the first death, right? So, they had no idea what that is. To explain that to the mother, that must have been, like, so depressing and sad. Can't even imagine that. Then she started to cry. Adam, alayhi salam, approached Hawa and he asked her, what's wrong? And she wouldn't answer. She kept on crying. He asked her a second time. She wouldn't answer. She kept on crying. And he asked her a third time. She kept on crying and she wouldn't answer. Finally, Adam, alayhi salam, he said, this is what the women among our children, they are more emotional at time of death and they will cry more. Of course, that's a fact. So Adam salam kept silent in relation to the news, but he said to Hawa, this will be the inherited attribute of our daughters. And then 
Qabil with his sister start to produce kids and then the descendants of Qabil started on one side and Adam alayhi salam on the other side and the corruption started to spread from Qabil and his descendants and then after the death of Adam it was his son Shaith Shaith is one of the Anbiya who is not mentioned in the Quran he is a Nabi that we know from Sunnah so the Sunnah is another term for the Hadith guys the prophetic sayings of the Prophet his teachings his life his sayings all that stuff so just keep that in mind okay Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed 104 scrolls 50 of them on Shaith wow Sayyidina Shaith received revelation from Allah he is the son of Adam Adam gave wasiya to Shaith to take care of the affairs of mankind Shaith means the gift of Allah wow. when Adam alayhi salam lost Habil and Adam loved Habil because of his righteousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced Habil with Shaith and Shaith was a righteous servant of Allah azza wa jal this son of Adam was very close to him he obeyed his instructions he learned from his father he actually used to remind his brethren, his brothers and the nephews and so on, and the grand nephews. Whilst Adam alayhi salatu was salam was alive as well, he continued to remind and to remind people of the beginning because there was nothing, nothing else to remind them about at that particular time. Besides to worship Allah alone and how shaitan had made a promise and so on. And from his progeny, from his children came most of the prophets. And some say all of the prophets ended up in his lineage. Mm. And Shaith starts to order with justice and fairness in the mountains mm. and spreading the good and the righteousness among the people that are living around the mountain. On the other hand, Qabil and his descendants were just spreading corruption and evilness. Mm. And they even were killing one another. And even the habits of their father was even increasing among them, killing each other and the haram spreading among each other. So you had the people living in the mountain, the people of the good and the people of evilness living on the flat surface of the land. And Qabil's descendants, their men were not as good looking as their women. And Shaith and his people, their women were not as good looking as their men. And from that door, shaitan played a big role to make the fitna in between. Mm -hmm. One of the orders of shaith among his people, he forbade them to mix with the people of Qabil. And they followed it, they did not mix, and they were saved to a great degree. After some time, a problem arose. Shaitan went to that side in the form of a handsome man. And when he went there, he asked for a job. Look, I need employment. I need to be employed here. So what happened? They looked at him. They decided, yes, good man, come, let's employ you. Let's give him a job. So he got a job. And as a man, he worked amongst them and he worked very hard. And then he slowly started. What did he start doing? It's important we listen to this. He slowly started making sounds, sound that people had never heard before. Because there were, there were no sounds that people had heard. That was the beginning of time. And now he took... He created a little drum and he beat it and everybody would come. What's that sound? And they would come around him and watch. Then he got a bit of metal and he started hitting it. And then it created a sound and they came. And then he made a bugle and he started blowing into it. And it created a sound and they came and they were excited. Wow, these people are intelligent. They, are, they have advanced much more than us. And so they were so happy. Sounds like the West, right? With all the technological advances. Oh my God, these people are intelligent. Of course, secularism or atheism, right? Like that's the norm and that's the way that it should be because all the smart people are about that, right? Which nobody wants to talk about in the golden age of Islam. How all a lot of different uh, inventions and all that stuff started from the studying of the Quran and the Sunnah. Right, for example, algebra came from Muslims. Even the scientific method, the development of that is from a Muslim. 
like it got further developed into today's method of the scientific method but people want to completely ignore religion and say oh yeah science and religion can never mix blah 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 it's just so ignorant man people don't understand that science is just a tool to study the observable world and understand how it works but you know it's based on induction not deduction and induction can change due to more observations in the future that we learn about so it's not certainty it's not absolute certainty right and it can change and people need to be open to that which they say they are but then they use uncertainty to reject certainty that we claim is certainty but obviously you got to look into the evidences and all that stuff and they got so engrossed in it that they slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet on the other hand, Sheikh alayhi salam kept on reminding his people. He kept on speaking with his people and he kept on telling his people what was right and what was wrong and so on. And on this hand, we find that shaitan is teaching them how to do evil, how to create evil. And after some time, they began to follow him. And when they began to follow him, it created this disaster for them. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence mm -hmm. and through that he would control them they literally set aside a day an evening a saturday evening and amazingly to this day it lasts this is why music is haram guys they set aside that evening where he would create these sounds everybody would come around and everybody would listen to him and everybody would literally party party they would party until there came a time when some of the youth from Sheikh alayhi salatu was salam were visited by shaitan. And what did he do to them? Something interesting. He went to them and he created a doubt in their minds. He made them ask a question. He made them question the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what shaitan does everyone. You know, he makes you question things about certain Sharia laws and stuff like that, like rules and regulations. You know, human beings are really curious, like we mentioned. So when you start questioning things, it's healthy to question things at certain points. But then you have to understand the wisdom and reasoning behind it. But shaitan makes it emotional, right? And it makes you feel like this emotional detachment from why the wisdom doesn't make sense. And then when you start thinking with your emotions and not your logic, that's when you get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path. And that's what stirs you away and brings you towards the evil. Why is it that we are not allowed to mix with these cousins of ours, with these relatives of ours? What is the law all about? What is the reasoning? What is so bad about them? That's a pretty valid question, right? Like, that's family. Why can't we hang out with them? So it's important that they even ask that, like any normal person would. But once they get the reasoning and the wisdom behind it, and especially from such an early generation that spoke to the prophet adam peace be upon him and had seen angels and all this other stuff they should be like the most fulfilled with the answers you know what i'm saying but the truth is they weren't and you're gonna see that in a minute look at this question so when they started asking this question it was answered for them that look Qabil had engaged in a crime right at the beginning he, he engaged in a sin at the very beginning and this is what he did he engaged in murder and his characteristics were different and so on and for this reason they were all on one side and we are ordered not to mix with them these youth were dissatisfied with the answer nah doesn't sound too good to us we're not happy with it when they were not happy with it some of them decided let's just have a peep at what's happening because we, we've heard that here things are going on these people are progressing let's go and see so they came down from the mountains and they went and from a distance they were watching and they had seen and it pulled them imagine they they did not intend to engage in evil but when they saw everybody's partying and what did they see they saw very good looking females and so they went closer and when they went closer they were seen subhanallah they were seen and they were good looking men so the women began to start displaying their beauty and to start dressing up it's biological man when men and women are around each other you're you know naturally your biological urges and needs are presenting themselves you know women want to look all pretty and nice for the man to attract them even if they're not doing it intentionally and lately that's just what happens and men start showing off showboarding this this and that you know 
this is just something ingrained within us to attract the opposite gender to it's like a mating call more or less right and that's why people don't understand this is another controversial topic on why women and men cannot be friends like you know today's western liberal world would tell you they can be but there's a saying that goes that if a man and a woman are alone in a room the third person within the room is always the shaitan the devil right and that's because their needs their urges even if it's uh you know not expressed deep down inside there's always some sort of thought process that is going sexually or something like that and obviously no one has to agree with me on that but it's just facts in order to attract this was the first time shaitan taught them this so when that happened these young men they came in and they enjoyed themselves, they had music, they had women, they had so much, they were partying, they were enjoying, and they went away. So as the men came back, they told the other youngsters, hey, you don't know what you're missing out on. Hmm. You see there, they've got different sounds, and these sounds are amazing. Now look, shaitan uses sound to control man. Wallahi, if you take a look at what a beat is, what is a beat? You start tapping your fingers. What happened? Who's controlling this finger of yours? Shaitan. What happens to your, your toe? It starts flicking. What happens to your head? It starts moving. What happens to your waist? It starts shaking. Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. So thereafter, these people came back with a bigger group. And they came back with a larger group. And the group was growing. And every time that party happened, there were people from this side who used to quietly go to that side and they used to engage in sin. The first sins music was invented and what else was invented creative was adultery so we have so many people today the modern muslims so-called right that have made music halal musical instruments is what i should say halal right when clearly it is not halal it is haram by all means like there's so much evidences to prove it from the sunnah so if you look at certain hadiths that did there's even a sign of the day of judgment where the prophet peace be upon him said that there will come a time where people make musical instruments halal when the prophet had made them haram for us so when you look at things like that people follow their desires and whatnot and people don't understand the detriments that music brings like it really controls us it influences our emotions you know to today's music like just look at the derogatory terms and about you know objectifying females and cussing at them and all that stuff like it's just crazy how we're okay with this as a society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. After Adam alayhi salam, Sheath lived on for a few more decades. Sheath alayhi salam, at his deathbed after him, he entrusted it to his most noble son. His name was Enos, who carried out his mission after him. Then after him, his son Kenan, and then his son Muhallalal took the charge of the mission. Muhallalal is the one whom Persians, they claim to be the king of the seven regions. It says that he was the first to cut trees, build cities and big castles. It says that he built the city of Babylon. He defeated Iblis, they say, and his army and then scattered them into mountains and valleys and killed a huge number of them as though there was a war between him and the jinns. Wow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best about this. And they say he had a splendid crown and his rule lasted for about 40 years after his last father. After him came a son named Jared who took charge of his mission. And here the Quran, the next man or the son that came after him, the Quran mentions him. His name is Idris alayhi salam. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك all right guys that was today's video so obviously we saw the history of gabil habil and sheet salam and all the works that they went through and the trials and tribulations and the tests of the people how the shaitan confused people and invented musical instruments to get them to intermix with one another and party and this and eventually that will lead to zina and other types of sins that you know are just not good for society as a whole so then the next central order of the prophets they mention a bunch of names that come after them but one of the main ones which is going to be the next video is about idris alayhi salam so i can't wait to get into that video next time thank you guys i hope you guys like the video 
If you enjoyed it, you know, leave a comment, like, subscribe, share the video with your friends, and I'll see you guys next time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a good one, guys.